Good evening. I'm your host, Modesty, and welcome to the Celebrity Spotlight Live talk show, where we take you beyond the lights, the cameras, and the action of celebs, authors, actors, culinary professionals, radio hosts, movie critics, athletes, performing artists, businessmen and women, and other noteworthy professionals. We're excited to have as our guest tonight from the sunny state of Florida, Chef Irie. Chef Irie is a television personality, and get this, he is a global culinary architect. In other words, he he can cook. Welcome, Chef Ari. How are you this evening? <laughs> I am fabulous. I'm fabulous. Wow, that's a that's a real cool introduction. Yeah, yeah, that's that's nice. It's uh, I'm good. Thank you so much, and to our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. We are thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. We know that you're in demand and you're quite busy, I'm sure, during this summer time. Um, thank you for being our guest on this evening. Oh, and thank you. Thanks, um, thanks for the invite. You are so welcome. For the next half an hour, we're going to dialogue with you about your journey and career as a chef. Uh, from the beginning <clears throat> until now. And we'll start right here, Chef Irie. As children, we often talk about what we want to become when we grow up. Some say, I want to be a doctor. Some say, I want to be an engineer. <laughs> Some say, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an actress. I want to be a dancer. I want to be a singer. Now, as a child, when you were growing up, did you know or is uh, becoming a culinary artist or chef something that you wanted to become? Or not, this is, go ahead, go ahead, dear. Yeah, not at all, man. Um, <laughs> this journey has been quite interesting to say the least. Thank you, uh, Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's definitely has been really interesting, and I think you know, I grew up in Jamaica in the Caribbean. And um, as most people in the Caribbean will attest to, you know, you, um, you're taught for certain things. Um, and one of those things that you sort of grow up learning and hearing is that you should try to be in, you know, the sciences and, you know, business, you know. Um, so most Caribbean people will attest that. So you, you know, you're either going to become an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, a, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Right. So for me, it, being a chef uh, wasn't even on the radar because that wasn't <laughs> okay. even uh, a profession that you wanted to go into. Um, yeah, and there wasn't, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, the culinary institutions that you would really um, want to, uh, you know, apply to in Jamaica at the time. So I went the traditional route and went and um, studied, you know, what I was supposed to study and, you know, um, until, you know, later in life, you know, you make other decisions and, you know, later in life I had to make another decision, so. Okay. And, and becoming a chef, what's that decision? Uh, <clears throat> That decision came about um, by me wanting or deciding that I didn't want to be an architect anymore. So my studies, my studies and journey took me to the states. I migrated to the states, and I, um, you know, did my junior college in Jacksonville, and then um, transferred to University of Florida in Gainesville where I um, pursued um, an architecture degree. <clears throat> so I did that, graduated, came out, you know, I was working for a few years um, in, the, in the field. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, just one of those things, I think, you know, school was great, it was exciting, it was competitive, you, you loved it. You know, my friends, you know, it was great, it was awesome. But right. you, know, you come out and after a few, you know, you just start to realize that, you know, something That's just wasn't, yeah, do. something wasn't clicking, you know, but and right, I didn't, yeah, clicking. I didn't have a fallback plan because I never, you know, thought I would be in that position. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I remember going back to thoughts, you know, okay, am I going to go back to school? You know, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Computers? I don't know what it was. 
And I just remember going back to conversations, you know, I was having um, with friends in college. And, you know, you know I remember um, one evening we were there in, in the apartment, you know, making up some food. I was cooking up some chicken, and mm. my roommate was cooking up some other stuff. And my, um, I think my girlfriend at the time, you know, she said, you know, I think you should go and, um, and, and check out this cooking thing. You know, I was like, cooking thing, really? So, yeah, and that was, like, about maybe five years, six years prior to that. And, wow. you know, I just, I just remember that conversation. Mm. So I checked it out, you know. And wow. I, uh, at the time, Johnson & Wales was, I think, the only accredited uh, culinary institution here. There were others, but they at the time were the only accredited in, uh, institution. I didn't want to sort of waste my time. Right. to, you know, going to a non-credit, uh, you know, uh, institution. Yeah. So I applied, and, but the funny thing about that, I, it took me, took me about a year and a half before I decided that I, I was actually going to go okay. into, going to uh, pursue that route, but after I did and I made that decision, um, I guess it's been, yeah, it's been 17 years later. <laughs> wow, 17 years. Yeah, when you say that it like that, it sounds okay. kind of long. <laughs> no, well, I think you're telling us your age when you said that um, a particular school was the only one yeah. during that particular time. I think you're telling your age, but you know what? We're not talking about age tonight. Good. <laughs> it's all good. You know, there was a time when I would, I would have uh, frowned in it right now. Um, yeah. I'm blessed, you know, I feel blessed, and yes, so it, it, it's not a, you know, age is just uh, what you want, what you make it to be, um, you know, so right now I, f- I feel blessed, you know, regardless of, you know, whatever journey has been going on, I feel blessed. Right, that's amazing. 17 years. You're, you're really into it then, definitely. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that you're, uh, girlfriend at that time just said you should look into it and sometimes you know God moves in mysterious ways and yes, sometimes um, if we're not listening carefully we might miss him but she might have just said that nonchalantly and uh, like you said uh, uh, she said it to you like five or six years prior to you wanting to venture into being a chef and mm-hmm. then it took you about a year and a half but the fact of the matter is had she not said that to you when she did who knows who knows yeah who, who knows, knows <laughs> what would have happened so god moves in mysterious ways now um let me ask you this too uh do you at any time or another compete with some of the other cooks in your family you said you're from jamaica i don't mm-hmm. know too many people from jamaica who cannot pardon my vernacular but throw down in the kitchen and 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 i'm telling you and 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 move some pots around i'm right. from um the deep south they call it the dirty south um, nice. alabama montgomery alabama so mm-hmm. when you can't cook in Montgomery, Alabama, it's a shame mm-hmm. upon you. It's a shame upon. It's a shame to be in a family and can't cook because they're thinking, right. you know, when you can't get married because right. you're not coming back here. You're going right. to have to learn how to cook. So, is there anyone in your family um, other than yourself that maybe was a mentor to you or who cooked just as well? Oh, I don't know if they cook as well as you, but have you ever competed <laughs> with anyone in your family? Never competed, but uh-huh. uh, you know. Obviously, I'm going to say, you know, one of the answers, and it's going to say cliche, and I remember a chef telling me, if, any, if another person tell me this, I'm going to kill him. But <laughs> my mom was a great, you know, mentor. You know, I didn't know it at the time, but mm. to me, and, you know, and I can say it uh, confidently, yeah. I think every chef out there, and yeah, I'd say every chef out there mm-hmm. always aspires, there's, Something about their mama's cooking, if they, yes. if they, were, if they were a good cook, something yes. about their mama's cooking That's that right. that drives them as a chef. And no matter how, especially if there was a favorite dish, and there, I don't care how many years you've had in the business, but That's that right. what you will <laughs> never be able to cook that one dish That's like, right. your, like, like your mama did. So, yeah, you know, my mom. But I come from a family of cooks. You know, my dad was a great cook. My mom was, you know, wow. an excellent cook. Um, and, you know, growing up in the islands in the Caribbean, 
um, you learn to cook at a very, very early age. Early um, age right. Yeah, right. very oftentimes, you know, because of necessity um, at, or because you're hanging around friends, whether it's in high school or even earlier, you're around people that are cooking out in the bushes. You know, wow. they're, out far, they're farming. So as a kid, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I, I was a part of that, you know. So right. I grew up around people cooking, you know, right in my sister in New York, you know, she's a great cook, um, you know, got nieces that throw down. So, But I've never really cooked with them. I also have a brother who's a chef as well. He's a chef instructor wow. in, um, in um, South Carolina, Maryland. So family of chefs, my dear, family of chefs. <laughs> that is phenomenal. I'm telling you, that that's phenomenal. It, it really is. And you're blessed to be in a cooking family because sometimes in a family, within a family structure, uh, one person can cook, and everybody else just do the eating. You right. know, but it's a blessing <laughs> to have so many cooks in one family. No one will ever go hungry. You know what I'm saying? Ever? Not at all. Because Not at all. everyone knows how to cook. Um, let me ask you this here: What do you love most about cooking? Oh well, what do I love most? Well, for one thing. I don't love cooking for myself, uh, so let's okay. let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> um, yeah, not that it's tiring, but I just I just don't love cooking. But what I love about cooking is the the idea of how creative you know you can be, um, and how you can broaden your scope, not yeah. just through um, one particular cuisine, mm-hmm. but by you know em- embracing you know, just flavors of the world, global flavors, yes. global cuisine. Mm. And for me as a person from the Caribbean um, who has, you know, been a part of that all my life, you know, um, now I get the chance to really put sort of like a, my stamp on, right. you know, what my, what my cuisine is. You know, you have right. so, many, so many cultures represented in every island in the Caribbean. And, you know, to go, to go and name them, it would be so be crazy right now. But I right. feel like I have the best of all kind of worlds, you okay. know, because okay. so I, I love the fact that I can be creative and create things that people exactly. will love and love. just, exactly. yeah. Yeah, so and that's enjoy. one of the best. That's one of the best things, you know, for me about about cooking right now. Okay, now we're going to take you back a little bit, um, if you don't mind. Go ahead, way back. <laughs> we're going to go back to your first meal. Ooh, um, first. And, wow. Yes, your very first meal, and then from that we're going to segue into um, what was the best meal and the worst meal, if there ever was one, you've ever prepared. So mm, um, let's okay. let's start. <laughs> uh, first meal, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. I'm done. While I'm talking, I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Not um, a yeah. Not first a meal. All right. So one of the. F- First meals I ever did. I'm trying to remember how old I was. Let's see. Okay, I was. Uh, I would say I was about ten or eleven. Wow. Um, and yeah, about ten or eleven. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a Sunday, so my mom had started dinner. Um, so basically, you know, she seasoned up the chicken and she made the peas for the rice and peas, mm-hmm. and that was it. So I didn't go to church that morning. And so I was like, you know what, let me see if I can just do this. Because, you know, I'm always sitting there watching my mom. So mm-hmm. I made the rice and peas. I, I fried the chicken, you know, flour it wow. up, fried it, everything. I made a salad. I made a salad dressing. I made a potato salad. I made a carrot juice. So my mom comes home, you know, goes, she changes off and, you know, puts on her duster, you know, you know, back in the day, the old term, yeah. And she goes in the kitchen and she's, you know, she just shouts out, "Yo, yo!" You know, <laughs> is, uh, put say, it on, man. Yes, that just say, "Who, who <laughs> cooks fix the meal?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, um, "The boy did know, it." Yeah, I say, "It's me, it's me, mama, it's me. I cook." So, oh my god! Um, so she was, wow. she was literally floored. Um, wow. You know, so yeah, so that was about ten or eleven. So you know, um, best meal. Wow. Yes, if yeah, that 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 that's a loaded question because I'm sure as a culinary architect that you consider every meal your best, probably. <laughs> I, I don't know if I consider every meal my best, but you know what? Yes. I think 
Um, you know, I leave that up to the people who are eating, and okay, based on what you. they tell I me, you. I will dis- I, you know I will make so that you know take it uh, you know for what it is. You know, um, if it was really good, you know, you can tell whether by empty plates or by comments or just That's by okay. sounds or or be, nobody speaking because they're just eating, you know, whatever it is, and you take that as a compliment and you run with it. You know, I mean, we're all as chefs, you know, we're all critical. We're very critical of, of what we do, you know. Um, mm-hmm. We we played a dish, and immediately as that dish goes out, you're probably like, man, I could have done it differently. You know, you cook something okay. and it tastes great, and you're like, mm, let's see if we can we can make it even better. The next you know? time, so, right, right. Yeah, the next yeah. time. So, um, yeah, you know, over a period of time, you know, I've made some dishes that, you know, um, they didn't come out exactly the way you wanted them to. And, yeah, but it was still yeah. edible. I bet you they still ate it. How about that? Yeah. Still, so, you know, you kinda, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, let's let's go back to the drawing board. Um, um, yeah, I even actually, want, you know, I did a, I did a, I started a tasting series um, this summer. Oh, wonderful. You know, um, you know, towards um, a future cookbook that I, you know, I want to put together. And one of the dishes I did this Saturday was a dessert. It was, um, it was supposed to be a, a Scotch bonnet uh, churro. Um, mm. With uh, jackfruit, a uh, jackfruit glaze and um, Milo, Milo drizzle, and wow. so I, I didn't do, I didn't follow my my directions well to make the churro, so it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, um, and based on you know people loved it and some people kind of liked it and some people like nah, I'm not sure, but I knew that it wasn't the, it wasn't the way it's supposed to be. So to me that wasn't that great you know attempt, but it was a, you know the the recipe I was like all right let's tweak this you know because I really exactly. wanted to see how it would come out. So we've had our you know my I've had my experiences you know um, since growing up and I think like you said back when you know from college, but I think the seed was planted. Uh, from when I was from when I was a kid, uh, I just didn't I just didn't know it then. Right. Wow. Amazing. You uh, uh, you're a global culinary architect. I've never heard anyone refer to themselves as that, and it's quite impressive. Tell us about that. And where did that uh, title come from? Wow. Well, you know, I'm always trying to put, you know, different subject matters together. And I think um, one of the times when I was, you know, trying to search for a culinary identity, so to speak, um, trying to put architecture and and food together. So, you know, instead of designing or drawing or working on, you know, projects that are buildings or whatever it is, the format is still the same. You're designing a dish in your head, and the, f- your, the way you go about it is still the same way. Foundation, you build on that foundation until you erect, you know, the, the, uh, the physical structure, if you would, which would be the food on the plate. So, you know, before we, you know, we go through a dish, you go through it in your head, you might put it down on paper, and then you're going to experiment and then try to execute it. So it's basically the same way. So Global Culinary Architect, you know, I've had the opportunity over the years to have traveled um, and I think using and utilizing, you know, my experiences through travel, you know, try to put those things together. So hence Global Culinary Architect. Amazing. I love it. And I, like I said, I've never heard anyone refer to themselves as that. I was so impressed um, when I read that global uh, culinary architect. And you know what? That sets you apart. Because, uh, yeah, it does. Because chefs usually who cook not only um, food from, I would say, the States, American food, but cook international, call himself an international chef. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But to call yourself a global culinary architect, you set yourself apart, and, and, and that's a great thing. Um, we have a few more minutes left, and I wanted to ask you, have you ever catered to or cooked for any celebrities, or is that one of the go- your chef goals for the future? Well, I have, you know, over the years I've, you know, have, um, you know, cooked for different people, different, you know, athletes, uh, entertainers, 
Um, so, you know, there's, you know, I wouldn't say like a huge list, but there's a list of people that I've, you know, cooked for on different occasions, um, for, different, for different types of occasions. Um, so small parties, larger parties. So it's, it's been interesting. Uh, it's been good, right. great, ex- great experiences, you know, when you meet these people. Um, so to be able to to give a part of you to them and exactly. their friends and their guests, you know, it's an awesome thing. So um, for them to enjoy it, you know, like you said, oh, yeah. that's the most important thing when you're cooking. You know, you're not just doing it for your energy; you're doing it because you're you're giving of yourself uh, through cooking. And I, I I believe that has a lot. Um, Chef Irie, to do with our the culture that we came from, because um, you're from Jamaica, and mm-hmm. I'm from uh, Montgomery. We still black, hun. Anyway, um, <laughs> we black babe. Okay. Anyway, yeah. um, down in the south, when we didn't have much, all we could do was give someone something to eat when right. they came to their house. You know, we celebrated mm-hmm. our love for mm-hmm. people. Uh, you know, by cooking for them. And like you said, too, you want to make sure that people enjoy your cooking. And if someone did not ask for seconds, that was kind of like um, saying it was good, but it wasn't all that good. So, you know, culturally, <laughs> a lot yeah. of things people, it, it, we, grow, we grow up with, you know, it, it, it's, it's similar in a lot of cultures, you know, uh, we right. grow up the same way with the same kind of principles, the same kinds um, of disciplines and right. things of that nature. Um, uh, now you yeah, mentioned. I, go ahead. Yeah, go finish. Ahead. No, go, go ahead. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was about to say my mom. You know, I learned you know some of that from my mom. And my mom was you know exactly the same. And you know, I just remember you know, especially around Christmas, you know, we would she would cater to just people, people that I, I grew up on the sugar estate, and you know, so wow. workers that were there during the Christmas time, they didn't go home. And I had family, so she would just invite, you know, people to stop by. You know, if you're around, stop by. You get cake, you get wow. food, yeah. you know, you get ginger beer, you get liquor, you know. you yeah. just And, yeah, so everybody just, you know, hang out in the backyard and, you know, just conversations till wee hours of the night, play dominoes, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so it's awesome, you know. And she would give it's you the shirt, fun. the shirt, yeah, the shirt off her back, you know, the shirt off her back. So, wow. yeah, go ahead. That's amazing. That is quite amazing. Um, tell us, you mentioned something about a cookbook. Is that mm-hmm. something uh, that you're working on right now, or that's something that's another one of your future goals? No, this is a goal that I put in the act. I, I put it out there a few years ago that I, you know, I wanted to write a cookbook, and that took me a while to get to that point uh, to make that decision. And so this summer, I said, well, you know, nothing happens, you know, unless you try to put it in motion. God's not going to so bless true. you unless, you know, if you're not if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So I said, well, how about, you know, doing a cookbook tasting series and, um, you know, really, you know, I have people volunteer their homes, you know, we have people come in, I do a three or four course, you know, uh, menu, and most of these recipes hopefully will make it into the book by the comments from the guests that are at the, um, the tasting. Um, some of them are old recipes, some of them are new recipes, mm-hmm. so you just get the feel for, you know, um, what's going to work if I have to retweak it. So, yes, this is a, a endeavor that I want to see happen, uh, hopefully within the next year. Um, okay. So, yeah, so look forward to that. No, I don't have a name for it just yet, it's um, okay. but, <laughs> but that will come, you know, definitely, um, you know, and uh, hopefully in the next season of the TV show Tasty Islands. Hopefully that will come out in a few months, so stay tuned for any announcement, um, you know, and uh, any other projects that I'm working on. Uh, definitely social media. You can always find me on social media now. Okay, you great. Know, yeah, you. <laughs> yeah okay. so in- Instagram, Twitter, Chef Irie. Uh, Facebook, okay. it's okay. Hugh Chef Irie Sinclair. Um, no, I'm not on Snapchat. I don't know if I have time for Snapchat. <laughs> right, I'm <laughs> you know. listening. Who does? For people who are not working. But I won't go there. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and um, we are uh, trying to tweak the um, the website. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to, you know, work with the website design so we can get that uh, finished soon. Um, so yeah, so you know, projects are coming up all the time. I cater. So if people are listening and they still want to have, you know, they want to have me cater an event, you know, you can find me on social media, contact me through there, and hit right. me up. Right. And you do, of course, you, you travel as well. 
Yeah, I do travel. So I travel for events and I travel for clients. So definitely, you know, um, whether in 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 the country or out, my passport is valid. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know because we certainly would not want you to get arrested at customs. Okay, that's oh, a wonderful no. <laughs> thing to know. Hold on one second, Chef Irie. Yep. <laughs> 